Hi everybody, I'm Rachel and I'm 32 this year. I'm a professional dance artist and I've been married for 5 years. Today, I'm sitting here with Elvin because he's going to answer all my questions about insurance. Hi Elvin! Hi Rachel! Hi everyone, my name is Elvin and I'm a client advisor from Money Hour. So today we are going to talk about the topic about insurance and I believe a lot of people find this topic to be quite difficult yes. because there's a lot of jargons, a lot of terms and conditions and a lot of stigma about this. So today I'm really here to clarify any questions you have and shall we begin? Yes! Alright. Okay Alvin, mm. first question. What kind of insurance should I get for myself? Okay, that's a good question. Um, Rachel, have you heard of this popular bedtime story about the goose that lay the golden eggs? Yes, 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 I've heard about it. But more so the idiom killing the golden goose? Mm, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so actually if you think about it, actually we are just like the goose that lay the golden eggs. Of course we don't go to the toilet and then we lay out golden eggs. La. <laughs> but then we actually, if you think about it, actually we do make an income. Every month when we work, we have an income. So that is like the golden egg. It's very important for us to protect this income. Uh, because this income is what brings food to the table, provide for our kids' education, and even allow us to save up so that one day we can save enough so that we can fire our boss, like we can retire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, there's three things that can cause us to lose our income. So number one is basically like a premature death. Uh, we pass on earlier than expected, but not leaving enough for our dependents. So number two is disability, whereby we cannot work for an income anymore, but we still have to pay for our expenses. And then the last one is basically medical crisis. Like example, we can have like uh, cancer, uh, stroke, that kind of thing. Whereby we have to worry about huge hospital bills and also worry about like uh, us having to stop for a few years to rest and recover. Us not having that income, but we still have to pay for expenses. Our insurance hence need to address these three areas and we can do so using very cost-effective solutions like term plans and also upgrades of government schemes like MediShield Life and Cashew Life. Okay, Elvin, so that's quite a lot of good information of insurance that I should get for myself. But then, what if I want to plan to buy insurance for my future child? What should I get? Mm, actually, that's a very common question I get from parents as well. So, Richard, what do you think are some of the insurance we need to get for our kids? Um, I have no idea. Actually, I have not thought about it. Uh, I think maybe medical? Medical insurance. Yeah, that's 100% correct. Actually, when a client comes to me, actually the first thing I check with them is also whether do they have a medical insurance in place already or not. Medical insurance is actually very important because if you think about it, uh, the, the probability of us uh, claiming or being hospitalised at least once in our lifetime is actually very high yeah. and the expenses can be quite big. Correct. Yeah, so we need to make sure that we do have a medical insurance in place and thankfully in Singapore, uh, all Singaporeans and PRs, we are already covered under this MediShield Life scheme yeah. which yeah, covers us to, for hospitalisation costs up to a B2 C ward of a public hospital. Uh, but there's certain limits to how much you can claim. Example, our daily ward charges, different surgery has different uh, claims limit as well. So that's why most parents, what they do is they actually upgrade this into an integrated shield plan uh, with a private insurer. And then this insurance, what it does is that it allows parents to cover their kids to a higher uh, healthcare provider, example like private hospital, ah. to match their healthcare expectations. Okay. Yeah, and because if you upgrade it, actually you don't, do not have to worry so much about the claim limits as well when you do upgrade it. Okay, so after knowing like all these different insurance that I should get for myself and my kids, so I'm just wondering how much like budget should I set aside just for family insurance? Because I've been talking a lot to my friends and then I realised that every family is kind of different, they spend like different kind of amounts on insurance. I'm just a little bit worried about spending either too little or too much on yeah. family insurance. So Understand what should what I do? Yeah, <laughs> so actually it is true. For different family, their cost varies from family to family. Yeah. Because each person's situation is different. Yes. So for example, someone who is like single and do not have much dependence, his need for death coverage is actually very low as opposed to someone who is like maybe a sole breadwinner, has many, many young dependents, then his need for death coverage is actually very high. End of the day, insurance is still an expense. So for us, our philosophy is always that we should buy as much insurance as we need, but spend as little as possible. And we can do so using some of the low-cost uh, insurance solutions I mentioned to you just now, like term plans and upgrades of government schemes. If we were to do that, actually we should be able to keep our insurance cost to about 5% or even lower of our income. And even after we factor in insurance for our kids, we should still be able to keep our insurance costs to 10% or even lower of our income. Cool, Elvin. So thanks to you, like, I managed to understand a lot more about insurance. And now I feel a little bit more confident to manage my finances and then secure my future goals. Thank you, Rachel. Really glad to hear that. So I encourage you to build on the momentum and knowledge you've gained today and really start planning for yourself and your family. Uh, but before we go, Rachel, is it okay I just share with you some lobangs? Yes, please. Okay. So actually, we do understand that for most people, they might feel a bit uncomfortable speaking with your financial advisor so soon. So for these people, what we've done is that we have came up with a website 
for you to go on to the website to just basically compare for the best value plans for yourself. And if you need a bit more guidance, we do have a guided journey where, whereby we'll walk you through uh, what are some of the insurance gaps you have, what are some of the insurance recommendations we have for you as well. Okay, and only when you're ready uh, to speak to someone, you can speak to you can always speak to a financial advisor like myself. We are all salary based. Like, all advisors at Money Hour are salary based. Oh, okay. Yeah. We draw a fixed salary every month. And what that means for you is that yeah, uh, we it eliminates any potential conflict of interest. You know that whatever we recommend for you is really in your best interest. Yeah. Okay, because we are all salary based, right? Yeah. So whatever uh, agent commission that the insurance company pay us, we actually half it and we bid it back to our clients in the form of cash. So that's extra savings for you as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Rachel, hope that's helpful to kick off your journey. And if you need help along the way, Money Hour is always here to help you. Oh, thank you so much, Amin. Thank you, Rachel. And to everyone that's watching, thank you. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.